All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. So thank you guys so much uh, for being here. I'm really happy to have you. Um, I, I love, I know it sounds a little crazy, but I love talking about anxiety. <laughs> I love talking about worry um, because I used to struggle with them a lot. And I, and I know a lot of people do, everyone does, everyone does at times and to different degrees. And um, I also know I wouldn't love talking about anxiety and worry if they looked hopeless and they absolutely in no way look hopeless and they did at one time and they don't at all. So that's what I'm really, really excited to share with you. So if you are, um, if you are new to me, I'm Dr. Amy Johnson. I've written a few books. Um, I have an online school called The Little School of Big Change where I help people with habits and anxiety. And I do consider those um, kind of the same thing, even though I know most of the world doesn't. I, you'll, you'll see maybe as I share a little bit here in the next hour, um, how they really are the same, how the way things show up in the world is what we're used to looking at. So I have this habit or that habit, I smoke or I drink or I shop, or in the case of anxiety and worry, my mind races, I have health anxiety, I have you know nightmares, I have this phobia or that phobia. All of those things look different and separate and unique when we're just in them, you know, when we're in the world and we have this tendency and it's you know it's reflected everywhere out there uh, to kind of look at them and treat them separately and differently. And I think that makes it oh, I know it makes it way more complicated than it truly is. And it takes us away from, from peace. It takes us away from seeing that we aren't these things and we don't have to live with them the way that most of us are. So I'm really excited to share an understanding with you that, that has changed my life in ways that I can't even begin to describe. Um, but one of just one of the many, many, many ways that it's changed my life is that my experience, including my experience of anxiety and worry, look and feel completely different than they once did. So I'll go into more detail about that. But I also want to say, even though I'm going to kind of share my story, because this is a thing that I, I do have personal experience with, it's not really about me and it's, this is not just my story. I've spent the last a lot of years, <laughs> the last a lot of years, sharing this understanding with lots of people. One-to-one uh, -one in my private practice for years, I was working with five to seven people a day, every single day, and now in my school, Little School of Big Change, and, and what I'm sharing is universal. It applies to everyone. There is no one and no degree of anxiety or no way that anxiety is showing up for you that puts you outside of being helped by what I'm about to share. So this is absolutely without question for anyone and everyone who's, who's struggling with worry or anxiety. No doubt about it. It doesn't matter how long, it doesn't matter what it looks like or any of that. So please keep that in mind as you're kind of listening. Um, another thing I just want to say briefly before I get into it about sort of listening to this is I think many of you maybe you've heard my podcast or read book or, you know, are somewhat familiar with some of this. Um, whether you are or you aren't, try to listen to this as if you aren't. So listen, listen to what I'm going to share, um, not in a way that's looking for a strategy or a thing to think or say to yourself in the middle of anxiety, because that's not at all what this is. You don't need that. We can all Google a hundred thousand of those things. We have, right? We've, we've tried it all. We've done all the breathing. We've done all the techniques. We've said all the things. We've done all the visualizations. Some of them have even helped. Probably many of them have helped for short periods of time. But, but what I'm sharing here, like what I share again, how I, how I see and, and help people with anxiety and habits and depression and all kinds of issues, it goes far, far deeper than, than managing your experience. Meaning, you know, here's a strategy or a tool or a tip that you're going to do in the moment. It's not about that at all. It's about coming to see yourself and your experience and 
who you are beyond that experience, how that experience works in a brand new way, a way that, again, it's so cliche, I hate saying it, but like a really, truly a way that just changes everything. It, it, it can change so much. Really what it's about is coming to feel safe in your experience. So it's not about managing your anxiety by doing a bunch of stuff which in the middle of anxiety, by the way, is the last time you want to do a bunch of stuff or even can do a bunch of stuff. It's not about that. It's about seeing who you are and how your experience works in a way that makes that experience feel like it doesn't need to be managed. Like it feels safer. It feels like it's not you. It's not yours. It isn't anything you need to jump on and do a bunch of stuff about. And that is what leads to deep and lasting change and really truly freedom, freedom, freedom to feel anything and not be so afraid of your experience. So, um, okay, so I'm going to get into it a little bit. And again, as questions come up, I won't be looking as I'm sharing, but pop them in the Q&A. And I'm for sure want to get to as many questions as I can at the very end. So hang on to the last, I'm hoping to spend the last 15 minutes or so on all of your questions, because that's where so much of the juice is. And even you all hearing other people's questions, there's so much to learn in that. So go ahead and pop them in there anytime. So, um, so I'll tell you a little bit, very briefly, about my experience with anxiety. Um, I had a lot of it, <laughs> a lot of experience with it, a lot of anxiety, a lot of worry. I was definitely one of those kids that Every, everyone looked at and said, oh, she's just a worrier, you know, like she's the oldest, she takes everything so seriously, she's so in her head, they say things like that. Um, and it was true. <laughs> I was, I was, I was always a thinker and I, and I, I did take everything very seriously and I felt like I had the weight of the world on my shoulders from a very young age. And, um, when I was five, my parents got divorced and all kinds of, you know, as is very common, I know, all kinds of upheaval happened in my family. Um, my sister dealt with it much better than I did. So I, I developed a bunch of twitches. I um, was constantly feeling sick. So I, like, they thought I had migraines and then they thought I had a stomach issue and it was all anxiety. It was all tied to what day of the week is it and who am I going to be with and what's going to happen? And just my head was just a mess. It was my poor little kid head was just trying to figure everything out all the time. And so it was twitches. It was stomach aches and headaches. It was nightmares, lots and lots of nightmares. It was really bad separation anxiety. Anytime I would be away from one of my parents, I just had horrible fantasies about them dying and just really scary stuff, especially for a kid or for an adult. Um, by the time I, you know, and I just dealt with it. I didn't go to therapy as a kid or anything like that. I just did the best I could. Um, by the time I got to graduate school is when I started having panic attacks. And in my second year, the beginning of my second year of graduate school, which uh, was kind of like the big time, like first year where everyone, everyone's kind of feeling things out. At the end of your second year, where I went anyway, um, we had qualifying exams. So it's kind of like that's the, where the rubber meets the road. Like if you don't make it through your second year and pass that exam, you're out. And I wasn't at risk for that, but my mind sure told me I was, right? So the beginning of that second year, um, I started just feeling really sick and really claustrophobic and really panicky often. And I would have to sit by the door in every class if I could even make it to class. And then it happened in stores and then it happened while driving. And so again, in my mind, all of these things look so separate. It looked like, well, yeah, I had this as a kid and it's all, I kind of knew it was all tied to me being a basket case is how I would have said it. I'm always in my head. I worry and, you know, but it all, it all looked kind of separate and different. Um, and I went to therapists. I was on a psychology program. So I had all kinds of therapists around ready to help. And, and they, um, they basically kind of said, yeah, you know, you, this is, this has been there. Look, this has been here your whole life. We can help you manage it. We can teach you some tools. We can teach you some breathing. We can do this, this exposure thing that I didn't know I was signing up for, or I never would have, <laughs> but I went into one therapy where there's all kinds of exposure to what I was afraid of. And, you know, 
I think some of that was helpful. I know I'm sure some of that definitely was helpful, but the message I kept getting was, you're just high strung. You just think a lot. You've always been anxious. This is kind of who you are. Some of that didn't say that explicitly and some did, but either way, I, that's what I was saying explicitly in my own head. You know, this is just how I am. And many, many well-meaning therapists told me, yeah, we can help you manage this, but you know, down the road when life gets stressful, you might have panic attacks again. You might have this, you might have that. This stuff just keeps showing up for you. So I just really came to, without even realizing quite how much, I really came to identify with myself as an anxious person. It just looked like who I was, how I was wired, how it was designed, what my childhood did to me, whatever, right? It looked so stable and real in many ways. And like my best hope was to try to learn some things that I could put into place to manage it. And I think that's, I share that because I think it's probably pretty common. You know, it, it, I think there aren't many people out there telling us that we're actually okay, especially when you've been feeling something for years and years and years, and you can trace it back, you know, as long as you can remember. And, and when it looks like that, all we see is evidence for that, of course. So that, it was, it didn't feel good. It didn't feel hopeful, but it made sense in a lot of ways. And so my anxiety started to get better and I don't really know why. I still don't, you know, I, I, things happened in my life. I met my now husband. I kind of got distracted from it. I wasn't alone all the time looking at it, worrying about it in quite the same way. I, I passed my qualifying exams. I don't know, but life kept moving forward. And it felt to me at the time, like, I don't know where it is, but I was always kind of looking over my shoulder. Like, I don't know, but knock on wood, I feel a lot better than I used to. I'm not having panic attacks anymore. But I knew that I hadn't seen anything. I knew that I hadn't really changed, if that makes sense. It just felt like a fluke. And it just felt like I got lucky. And that was not a good feeling. I was grateful, don't get me wrong, but that was not a good feeling because I was always looking over my shoulder thinking, oh gosh, well, what if what they said is true? And you know, next time life gets hard or there's some obstacle, this is all gonna happen. And, and looking back, I can see I did have anxiety. It showed up in different forms in different ways, but it was much better. The panic attacks had kind of subsided in some ways, but, but I didn't feel free. And so um, I found myself caught up in a totally different habit and all of that was very much anxiety related. Um, and, I, and I was always just looking for a way to feel free, like really free, you know, not just, not just without panic attacks showing up, but without anxiety and worry showing up in the same way. But I knew there was more. And I think that's such a common thing. I think almost all of the thousands of people I've worked with have this sense or else they wouldn't have shown up to work with me. They wouldn't be looking in this new direction that on the one hand, we know what we've been told forever and it, and it does have a certain logic to it. You're anxious. This is your diagnosis or your diagnoses, as is the case for many of us. This is what you're up against. This is how you're going to deal with it and cope with it. That's all, that's, that just looks so real. And that's what we're told by all the professionals and the books and everything else. But then over here, at the same time, it's like there's this sense that life can't be this hard. Like life cannot be about managing our every experience. Kids don't have to do that. I mean, really little kids, like they have all kinds of experience and they don't have to breathe through it or figure it out or manage it. And I always knew that. And I think a lot of us have that sense. And that's, that's exactly kind of what, what led me into this, this understanding that I share now. So what I began to, to see through, through what I was exploring was that actually the design of human beings is not that we're wired anxious to some degree. Like we have, you know, we have personality stuff that shows up over and over throughout life and sure there's family history and there's stuff that happens and all of that. So that's, that's a thing on some level for sure, but deeper than that. The, like the fundamental essence of all human beings, no exceptions, literally zero exceptions. If you're thinking I'm an exception, you're not. No exceptions. The fundamental essence of all people, of all humans, is that we have this 
peaceful, resilient, endlessly healthy, wise, calm essence. And that is who we are. And no matter how anxious you've been, no matter how often you feel anxious, no matter how long it has lasted, that essence, that you has never, ever, ever gone anywhere and it can't go anywhere. It literally is who you are and what you are made of. No exceptions ever. So why do we feel so crazy? <laughs> why do we feel so far away from that at times? That, that what I sometimes call home base or that essence, that peaceful, resilient, healthy us is there and it's never not there. And, and on top of that, we are constantly experiencing our own psychology. So our own feelings, our own thoughts, our own physiology, our body doing stuff, which is all, I really kind of see that as all one, right? It's all, it's all kind of connected. It's different facets of the, same, of the same prism. So we think stuff, we feel stuff emotionally, we feel stuff physically. It all kind of comes together and works together. And, and that experience moves through us all the time from the minute we're born till the minute we die we are flooded with this coming to life experience within us sometimes it's a panic attack other times it's excitement other times it's this really quiet peaceful presence it's everything right there's an enormous variety of it thank god because we get this amazing variety of life of experience in life but it's always moving through us and it's always being brought to life in such a real way as if that's kind of all there is, you know? So we, we think things and we feel things and we, we kind of, it's almost like we have this helmet on where our experience, our psychology, how fast our heart is beating or what we're thinking or what's gonna happen tomorrow or all of that stuff. It's almost like we have this helmet on and it's all we can see is all of our psychology. But if we took the helmet off, or if we even just know, we know beyond that helmet, wow, that's just my experience. And it's very much in my face, especially when it's uncomfortable, especially when we're afraid of it and it scares us and we think it's wrong. But anyway, it's in our face all the time, but it's not all there is. There's so much, so much peace and health and resilience in there beyond that experience. And so what I began to see in this completely, I want to say it blew my mind. In the moment, to be honest, it didn't. It, it, it struck me as something that was so right and felt so true and resonated so deeply. But it was one of those things that I, I knew there was something to it, but I didn't quite get it. And it continued to unpack and open up over time. And it was that I had had it backward. I had thought and been innocently told that I was an anxious person, that high strung was kind of my default setting. That was kind of my nature. And the way it looked to me was that I had moments of calm in the middle of being anxious and high strung. And when I say that, I mean throughout life, honestly. I, 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 that's what I was looking for. So that's what I saw, right? So looking back from the time I was five or younger up until, you know, whenever I came across this understanding in my 30s, it, I could just look back and it just looked like, oh yeah, I was always like this. And then I just had moments of calm and I would just dismiss those. I mean, they were, they were wonderful, but I didn't know what that was about because that wasn't me. You know, that was just some fluke. I just got graced with some nice moment, whatever. I got a break. And I began to see that I had that completely backward and that, again, this isn't about me, that every single one of us, it is the design of all human beings, every one of us has that backwards. We are the calm. We are that peaceful moment as you're drifting, drifting off to sleep at night where suddenly all your thoughts just kind of leave your mind just for a second before you fall asleep and you just feel at peace. We are those little moments of just presence or gratitude or just, just being there with not much on your mind. That is who we are. That is our default. That's our essence. And all this other stuff isn't us at all. It's not even ours. 
meaning like it's not personal. It doesn't belong to us. It doesn't mean anything about us even. It is experience moving through us and it moves through us and it comes to life in a huge way. And our mind talks about it as if it's us and ours. So we have this little talker in our head. I'll show you if, if you know me, you know my teeth. It, this webinar requires the teeth, not all do, but this is a teeth one. So this is like what we have in our heads, right? These little, I won't wind them up because they're kind of loud, but they just chatter. So we have this little talker in our heads that everything we feel, this little guy goes out and makes it about us makes it personal, says, oh my gosh, you shouldn't feel this way. Why do you feel this way? What's gonna happen? What about later? What about yesterday? I mean, it's constantly talking like that. You may have noticed, <laughs> especially when you're anxious, especially when you are feeling a lot of energy moving through you. This guy doesn't sit back and say, oh, that's energy, you're okay. Like he says, he says, oh my gosh, again, what's going on? When will it end? What's causing it? Why is it causing it? How can I stop it? What should I do? Constantly. And this is what, this is why we get so wrapped up in our experience is we have a voice in our head that talks about us all the time and tells us that, well, it's because you did this or you said that, or you didn't sit by the door in the classroom or your the car is too hot or whatever. It wants to give you reason and justification for how you feel. It wants to tell a story out of everything when truthfully there's no real story there. But that's what a mind does. That's part of its job is it tries to make sense of life in order to protect us. And so when we're feeling anxious, of course, that's when it's in full gear. You know, that's when it's like really ramped up, just talking about everything. So see if you can kind of just get a feel for this flip because it again for me it, it i knew it when i heard it but it, it it continued to unpack and open up for years still is still is that we're the quiet we're the peace we we are not broken we are not anxious we can't be we are not worriers we are not any of that we are fine and that we always return to that Maybe not as often as you'd like, maybe not for as long as you'd like, but if you look, I could see it when I looked, but before I knew it, I didn't know to look there. If you look, you will see that your mind always wants to kind of come back home. It wants to settle down. There's a momentum there that it will get all revved up and then it wants to settle down because that truly is the design of a mind, of a human being. That's how we work. So we're the piece and the anxiety as well as the excitement and the anticipation and the happiness and the joy and the sorrow and the sadness all of that none of that is us and none of it none of it lives in us none of it can be us it kind of just moves through us but because it moves through us and then our mind talks about it so much we think it's us now I'm going to pause for a minute because I just said a lot <laughs> and it's, and it's big stuff. And I want to say a lot more, but I just want to, I just want you to kind of know, again, you don't have to, you don't have to follow everything I'm saying. Your mind might be trying to make sense of it and see how it's going to help you and how will this help my anxiety? That's what a mind will do, but you don't have to figure all that out right now. This doesn't all have to land in one hour, but if you, if you kind of have a feel for what I'm pointing toward, if it kind of makes sense and it kind of resonates, that's amazing. That's plenty. If you can leave this webinar just feeling curious, maybe a little bit hopeful, maybe like, oh, this is a different direction than trying to manage my experience and all of that, you're doing great. So one of the, um, one of the metaphors that always really lands with people is the weather. It's just so super simple. So. I used to think I was these anxious storms. Like I was the cloud, I was the storm. And, and really what we start to see is that we are the sky, that any weather can move through that sky. And it does all the time. Weather never ever stops moving through the sky. It never stops. It seems like it does. It might rain all day or it, you, know, you, might, you might have a heat wave or you might have a drought but it is in motion and we all know that. We all deeply know that. It's, it's against the nature of weather to just sit there. 
it is always moving and changing. And that is exactly, exactly, this is not just a cute metaphor. Take this as literally as you can. That is exactly how human beings are designed. We are the sky. We are untouched, fundamentally untouched by the weather. Now, it feels like we're touched by the weather. <laughs> we get spooked by it. We get afraid of it. We identify with it. But that's simply because we misunderstand it. That's it. That weather moves through us. I, I misunderstood it all the time, still do. That weather moves through us and we think, why am I thinking this? Why am I feeling this? Why is my anxiety back? We, we, it's like, it would be like going outside and saying, why is it raining? Why is it still raining? Why is the sun out? This doesn't make sense. Like, we don't try to make sense of that because we know better. But when it's within us, with this guy talking all about us all the time, we definitely try to make sense of it. And we can't. And that's what kind of gets us in trouble. So really, everyone, everyone resonates with the, I shouldn't say everyone, but because you might be thinking, I'm not. But most people resonate with the weather metaphor because we deeply know how weather works and we just get it. And I really want you to take this as, apply this to yourself as literally as you can, because it's like, we feel like what's moving through us is damaging us, is hurting us. It shouldn't be, it's leaving a mark. This is, this is you know, we, that's how it feels to us, but it's never ever the case. It can't be, it cannot be. It only feels that way because we think that that's how it works. It's just the most innocent misunderstanding in the world. But as we come to see that we are the sky, we are like, we're like a container. And through this sky or through this container, all kinds of stuff flows. And it changes on its own, not by our managing it. It changes on its own, just like nature does. I want you to see if you can just get a feel. Now, again, don't think you have to have that deep in your bones after 29 minutes. You don't. But I want you to just really look at this and say, can I, can I see how that would change things? If, if, if you really deeply saw that, you saw, wow, I can feel anything. Thought, feeling, heart palpitations, upset stomach, worry, that can move through me, but I know that's not me. It, there's, it is impossible that that wouldn't completely change your life. And it is impossible that you would still have anxiety if you saw that. It's impossible. They're inconsistent. You would see, now you might still feel stuff, you might still think stuff. You would. You might still have a worried thought. You might still feel something. But, but if you deeply saw, wow, that is not me. That is my experience moving through me. And you get this bigger feel, which doesn't always happen overnight, but I promise you it happens. When people continue to look in this direction, it, it, it happens. Like when you get this bigger feel for, for the fact that we are the peace, we are the space, we were never any of that. You start seeing how obvious it is. And it's the most fun thing in the world, I'm telling you, to see, oh my gosh, I can't believe I thought I was my judgmental thinking, for example. Because think about it, our thinking is always changing. You judge something, yourself, someone else, something one minute, the next minute your thinking is totally somewhere else. A week later, you might have a completely different judgment. Like, how, how stable is that? How can that have anything to do with you? How can that really be anything that we get so wrapped up in? But it is, and it is for all of us. So don't feel bad. <laughs> you are in the best company with, with all of humanity, honestly, because the way our experience works is from the inside out. And we have this mind that's telling us it's about you. And it, you know, we are the center of our own little universe and our mind spins it that way. There's so much to see in this that we don't have time for right now, but it is the most uh, pervasive, innocent misunderstanding and you know, known to man, like we've all been in it. And as we begin to see, oh, none of that was me everything starts to change. So I want to just spend a couple minutes talking about um, a couple people. I, I work with tons of people with anxiety, um, tons of people with anxiety in little school of big change. And I've seen 
I have so many amazing stories, but I want to just give you a couple super, super short ones so you can kind of get a feel for how this might look in someone's life. And another piece of this that I just want to briefly touch on is, um, and I know I'm saying a lot. So again, this is big stuff. Sometimes people get off this this kind of conversation and need a nap. So don't, don't feel bad. And for sure, I'll be sending out the replay. So this might be the kind of thing you listen to a few hundred times. It is for many people and that's totally normal. But there's something about seeing how what we experience and what we call anxiety or what we say is uncomfortable or painful or scary, there's a much deeper way to see that. And I, I just want to begin to kind of point there just so you can see this. If we ask the question, like, what is a feeling? I think we can probably all agree that if you weren't afraid of your feelings, if we were fine with it, like, oh, bring it on. I can feel anything. I'm fine with feeling sad. I'm fine with feeling scared. I'm fine with my heart or my stomach doing this or that. I'm fine with worry. It, we'd have a radically different experience of life. And we sure as heck wouldn't be feeling like we're stuck in worry or anxiety because we'd be like, bring it on. And what we would see is that it moves through us. Just like weather moves through the sky, it corrects itself. It needs no managing. It is not a problem. So there's nothing to fix or manage. It truly is not a problem. It, we just think it is. So if we saw that it wasn't, you know, just kind of play this out, like what if? What if you truly just welcomed it all and saw that it is not problematic at all? It's just that we've come to think it is. And that's what creates our suffering and our stuckness. To kind of feel for how different that would be. So if we ask the question, what is a feeling? I don't know like the answer. I'm just telling you kind of how it looks to me as I've tried to express this. I've spent, you know, a decade or more trying to express this in words and, and in order to help people. And as I just sit here right now, the way it looks is like, what well, this thing that we're so afraid of is basically energy moving through our bodies, and then it's a bunch of thinking. It's this guy talking about it. So if you say, oh, I don't like, you know, I don't like to feel that energy. Like I, you know, I don't like that. I don't like when my heart races, speeds up, or when I'm like, when my palms get sweaty or when my mind starts racing, I'd say, yes, you do. Because you, again, maybe not in your, if you're in the middle of anxiety, because I know I cut my life very small when I was in the thick of anxiety. But in general, human beings love that. Are you kidding me? Like, that's why we have books and movies and fictional stories that keep us on the edge of our seats. That's why we ride roller coasters. That's why we like surprises. Like, we love all of that stuff. We love energy. We love heightened energy moving through our bodies. We call it excitement half the time, anticipation, love, like butterflies in your stomach in the good way. We love it. We have no problem with that. We love uncertainty. We love not knowing. Again, look at every book and movie and play and like all of our entertainment is about, un is about not knowing. So we aren't afraid of that stuff. And it's not inherently anything. I mean, half the time we're loving it. What has it cross over and feel like what we're going to call anxiety or what we're, when we're going to say, I don't like it, I can't handle that, is the interpretation. And I just want you to start to get a little corner of a feel for this because it will, it will keep expanding. This little guy comes in and says, that one's okay because you're watching a scary movie and you feel a little bit and that's supposed to happen. But over here, that's not okay. Or, you know, the car's too hot in my old case, or this shouldn't be happening, or that should, or this is safe, or that's not, or, oh no, here comes another panic attack, or why do you feel this way? What's going on? It's all about the interpretation. And if we can start to see that the interpretation is fundamentally untrue, it is never objectively true. It is never telling us anything that we absolutely need to know. It's not. If it was, we'd we'd know, like it would feel like knowing. It wouldn't change its story all the time. It wouldn't be so dramatic and like trying to get your attention and scream at you and then calm down and then rev up and then calm down. Like it, 
it wouldn't do that. It wouldn't behave in that way. This is a busy mind. It is just a mind that's constantly trying to help you. Now, it's not, a, it's not an enemy at all. It's trying to help, but it's all over the place. And it's nothing to be trusted. And, and there is nothing to fear. Our, our experience is so safe. It is self-correcting. It revs up and it settles down all the time, all day, every day, our entire lives. It's just that this has us believing that it's dangerous and scary. So how this has looked for people, I, um, I'm just picking out a couple that really kind of are the epitome, like a, a nice summary of all this. So I, I'm thinking of a woman I worked with named Beth. Um, that's not her real name, by the way. But she was just so, she had a lot of health anxiety. Any little tweak or little tingle in her body, and me too at one point, um, her mind would just be off to the races, right? What is that? This is happening. That's happening. And she knew better as we do. You know, she knew she had been, had all the checkups as we get, and she would, she knew there was nothing really wrong with her, but it didn't matter. Her mind would just get so caught up in it. And as she started to see more and more about this, in one of our conversations one day, it just, I don't know where this came from, but it just occurred to me, it really sounded to me how she was describing these big blips of anxious energy and all this thinking, right, that had her so freaked out, that it was kind of like the hiccups. Now, I please don't hear that as like discounting your suffering, because I get it. Panic attacks and hiccups are nothing, feel nothing alike. But they are alike. They're really not very different. Hiccups, I don't, I'm not that kind of doctor, but something's happening in your body, right? Your diaphragm's doing whatever it's doing. It's contracting or whatever. So it's like a spasm and you hiccup. Energy, anxiety, what, what our mind calls anxiety, um, anticipation, focus on something in your body. Same thing. Your body's just doing stuff. Your heart's just beating. It knows how to settle down. It always has. Your palms are sweating. Okay. Your stomach's in knots. Okay. It's a machine. It's a machine. And it, and it does that. And then it settles itself back down. The problem, the only reason that hiccups feel different than anxiety is this thing coming in saying, oh no, this isn't okay. Here it goes again. Now this is just as machine-like as your diaphragm or any other part of your body. But but it uses words <laughs> and it talks about you and it says, oh no, Beth, here you go again. Are you going to go to back to the emergency room or are you going to see that it's anxiety? You know, so it like the words get us so caught up in it. But when Beth really began to see, oh my gosh, I am not this experience. My body is, is conditioned to do all kinds of things. My mind is conditioned to call it anxiety to say, I don't like this, you know, tell all my stories about it. But Beth was like here. Beth was like, yeah, that's my mind. That's my mind. That's my body doing what a body does. That's all machinery. I'm none of that. And as, and I know these are just words right now, but I want you to just see if you can get a feel for what a difference this makes. It's everything. As Beth began to see, I don't need to manage every feeling my mind can freak out and worry and my body can do this and that. And when I'm just here letting it move through, it all corrects itself. It truly does. It always has. Every bit of anxiety you've ever felt has ended all by itself. Not because of all the things we do to try to make it stop. It just does. It's just like weather. Just like weather. Another one is Sandy and she was agoraphobic for years, decades really. And she began to see very similar things and feel really just safer in her experience and see, man, my mind really doesn't like to feel certain things, but that's just my mind with its opinions. What if I can actually feel those things and they're not so bad? And little by little, Sandy started leaving her house. Not as a, not from, not as homework from me, not as even a really like, okay, I should do this because that's the thing to do. But truly what she told me once was, I just figured I'm going to feel stuff either way. I'm either going to sit at home and my mind's going to talk and my body's going to do stuff, or I'm going to go out to the store and my mind's going to talk and my body's going to do stuff. <laughs> and she saw that again, don't those words alone are just words, but she deeply saw that that was the case. 
that going out and, do, and being in the world had nothing to do with it. She was safe no matter what. And little by little, she started going out. So I just share those to kind of hopefully make this a little more concrete for you. Again, I know that's not really concrete in the big picture of it, but if you can just begin to see how, how deeply seeing some of these things I'm pointing to, deeply seeing that you're the sky, not the weather, the weather moves through you and it's all safe how that could change your entire experience of your feelings and, and, and anxiety. Anxiety would not make sense. You would not feel it as an ongoing thing if you saw things more and more in that way. And that's what I see for people all the time. So I want to spend just a couple minutes telling you a little bit about my school because this is the way that I help people find freedom exactly like Sandy and Beth and, and just like I found and um, it's the best, it's the best way, and I've tried a lot of things and worked on a lot of things. It's the best way to really get support to see this in a deep way. And then I'm going to go to your questions. So I see some there, which is awesome. So keep putting your questions in if you have them. So, um, so the Little School of Big Change is a six week online course. There are people from all over the world, over 40 countries in the school. So it's, it's open to anyone. It's all online. Um, it's a six week course where every week you get some lessons that walk you through this understanding. So I created the school three years ago and really created it like, like if I want to take someone who is totally in their experience and totally duped by it and thinks this is them, like how would I just slowly walk them through it? So there are 20 some lessons, short video lessons, and you get about an hour of lesson each week on video. Um, and then every single week for the six weeks, I lead two group calls. Those are 90 minute calls where I am coaching you through anything. So you aren't left alone to just take in some videos, although they're really awesome videos. People do kind of just self pace through it and they get a ton from it. You get to keep those forever, by the way. The content alone is amazing, but what really makes this different is that you are in a group of people from all over the world looking in the same direction, and I am with you walking you through it every step of the way. So you watch an hour of video on the first week, and then you have two 90-minute calls with me where you're saying, I don't get this, say more about this part, or here's how my anxiety felt last night even though I watched this video, or help me see this part more deeply, whatever it is. And all your friends from all over the world are asking similar questions that are incredibly helpful to hear and for me to coach, to hear me coaching them and supporting them on. So I'm personally guiding you through this content over six weeks. Um, we also have a private forum. It's not on Facebook. It's a forum within our, our website, totally private. And myself and two amazing coaches that I've trained are in there around the clock supporting people all the time. So often people ask, because I, like I mentioned, I have a podcast, I do weekly videos, I've written books, I, I, I'm out there a lot. <laughs> I apologize if you're sick of me, but I'm giving out free content. I'm sharing this all the time because, because I can't not, because I see what it does. And so it's an excellent question and a very common question. People say, well, how, why would I do a six week program when I can just listen to these free things. The school, the little school of big change is totally different. It is its own container and it is full of support. So, and, and again, the content, it's like curated and designed and it's tested. Over a thousand people have been through the school and I've made lots of changes based on what I see land with people and what doesn't land so much. So it's an immersion, like it's an experience. It's totally, totally different, if I'm honest, it really is, than listening to a random podcast episode or watching a one-off 10-minute video here or reading a blog post over there. It takes you, <laughs> we take you, and we walk you through this in a way that's hard to describe in words, but it's like every step, there's so much contact over these six weeks that you do not come out of six weeks seeing life the same way. And I can absolutely guarantee that will be the case. Like you will not come out of six weeks seeing yourself and your experience in the same way. No, no doubt about it. So that's how it's different. It's the fastest, most supportive little container for seeing this. So I teach the school only twice each year. And that's because I'm in there so much and my kids know, you know, 
leave mommy alone for six, they don't leave me alone for six weeks, but you know, like this is my time, right? I'm, I'm super supportive and immersive. So I only have the energy and the, the time and space to do it twice a year. Um, the next course is beginning March 2nd. There are people with habits, all kinds of habits and lots of anxiety, lots of worry, lots of mental habits, phobias, things like that. And we all just learn together and we look in this direction and it's different from anything that any of us have done before to try to manage our experience or feel free. It is so much deeper and it's, it's just amazing what people see. You can check out, there's a million testimonials and things people have said about it um, on the website. I think in the chat, maybe, um, yeah, there's a link there. Um, so you can see more there. So the next course begins March 2nd in less than two weeks. Um, the course is $450 if you register uh, before March 2nd. Yes, before March 2nd. The deadline to enroll is March 5th. So this is all happening very, very soon here. Um, and you want to do it as soon as possible for two reasons. One, um, I will cap it at a certain number just because I have so many people to support. So if you get in sooner, you make sure to save your seat. Two, because you were on this webinar, uh, we have a bonus for you. It's a talk that I gave um, last summer and it's a, you know, I sell it as a separate kind of download product, but because you were on this webinar, if you join the funeral in the March course of Little School of Big Change, you will see that inside. When you go to log in, you'll see the talk right there. So it's an amazing way to, um, to get some support right away. You don't have to wait for another week and whatever it is, 12 days or so before the next course starts you start getting that, you get that talk right away. So you get more on this right off the bat. So again, the link is there. Um, and I just really would love to support you through that course. It's, it's amazing. It changes so many people's lives and it's, it's for sure the best way I've seen to immerse in this. And, you know, for $450, I understand that's a, that's an investment, but it's, I mean, if, if you're going to talk with someone privately a couple times, that's about the same price. And this is six weeks of nonstop support, plus an amazing community of people from all over the world and who you learn so much from. You learn more from them, honestly, than you do from anything I say in this course. And it's so beautiful to see that because we're all the same. Their anxiety, their worry, it's not any different than yours. It might show up differently. It's all the same. And so it's just so beautiful as you start seeing other people have insights and realize, oh my gosh, like I don't have to take this so seriously, or this isn't me, or wow, it did change on its own. You catch insights from them. It's, it's a really, I don't know, obviously, I love it. I love it so much. It's just a great program, and I'd, I'd be really honored to get to support you there. So um, I am available to answer any questions you have about the school. You can just email me whatever you need to do. Email me, uh, private message me anytime, and I'll jump on a call with you. I'll return your email right away, and we can get all your questions answered. Speaking of questions, um, let's go to some of the questions that you have. I'm going to go to the Q&A. Um, it may take a sec because I want to scan through some of these and just um, hit some that I think are really representative of, you know, what I hear a lot from, from a lot of people. Um, okay, so just a hot, just kind of an easy question. Brianna asks, is this for people who are suffering or for therapists working with this population? The, the vast majority of people in the Little School of Big Change are people who are struggling with this stuff. So this is, this is where I, I do train coaches and therapists, but this is where I'm helping everyday people who are just really struggling. That said, a lot of people who work with this population join the school, right? Because you get to kind of see this new way of looking at things. And so it's great if that's, if, you know, if you're a professional in this field, um, they get a ton out of it. But primarily, the most the audience I'm really speaking to is people who are struggling themselves. Okay, thanks for bearing with me. I just want to kind of skim through some of these to see. Um, um, oh, I love that. So someone said, 
what's going through us, I really saw today is just energy. The pain in my chest just dissolved. Truly, if we can see our experience is, it's not that it doesn't create issues, right? If you sit and worry all the time or you have a ton of anxiety all the time, like you, you might have some physical, physical side effects of that. Thank God, those are your wake up call. Those are there to wake you up and show you, hey, maybe you're not, maybe you're taking your thinking too seriously. Maybe you're not seeing that you're the sky. So I, I mean, again, I don't, I don't wish ill health on anyone, obviously, but when it comes to that, even where we all are, even where you are right now, where you wouldn't be here, where it just comes to struggling and thinking, wow, there has to be, it has to be easier than this. There has to be a way out of all of this. Think, I'm so grateful that we've reached that point because it is, it wakes us up. It turns us around and wakes us up to what's, what's really going on. I would have never come across this understanding and been able to share it with so many people if I hadn't struggled so much. So, so for sure, I mean, it's amazing to see it is inherently safe and healthy, but it, but, and it does cause issues. It does cause issues physically, right? But, but what those get to do is just wake us up to seeing more in a bigger way. So there was a question related to that. Um, it can have an impact on physical health, hence some of the desire to fix it versus letting it move through us. Yes. Any thoughts on the physical aspects of the effects of our anxious thinking? Yeah, just that. I mean, when we are in a ton of anxious thinking for a long time, we're going to feel it. And isn't that beautiful? What if we were just in anxious thinking our whole life and we had no feedback system? We had no way to know, like what a, what a waste. You might say, well, that'd be nicer than where I am now because I wouldn't be struggling with health issues. And I, I get that on some level, but, but it's really about seeing, seeing through this misunderstanding. See, when we see that the worse we feel, the more that feeling is there, the whole purpose of, of struggle and pain and, and discomfort is to wake us up to the fact that we are really the sky, that we have a helmet on and we're thinking we're, we're a storm cloud and we are not a storm cloud. For as long as I thought, I'm anxious, I'm anxious, I'm anxious, what did I experience? Lots of anxiety and lots of breaks, but I didn't get to experience the breaks because I was blind to them because I kept saying, I'm anxious, I'm anxious, I'm anxious. As soon as that got to a point where I said, enough already, I can't live like this. And it doesn't, I don't mean to make it sound you have to have this giant, you know, on your knees surrender moment, but, but we do, we, we, we wake up to it through our struggle. We get to say, wow, there has to be more than this. This is the more for, for so many people. This is the more, this is what all the struggle is turning you back toward and waking you up to is wow. What if I've had it wrong, innocently had it wrong? What if all this experience moving through me is not as it appears? It's not mine. It doesn't mean anything about me. It's not inherently painful or scary. It's just experience and I'm misunderstanding it. I think it's inherently painful. I think it's me. I think it's all of this. We just, we just have it wrong, and, and please don't take that personally. We don't even have it wrong in a big way. We have it wrong in kind of a little way. It doesn't take much. It's like we're over here thinking, why this twitch? Why this health anxiety? Why these hives? Why this stomach problem? And we're so focused on how life is showing up, or why this worry? Why this phobia? And if we can just look this way a little bit and see, oh, wow, all of those things, all of that experience is, is the same. It's all energy and our mind talking about it. And we are none of it. It all fixes itself. It all fixes itself. The more we, we, we just feel into that space, it's incredible because you still feel stuff. You're still human, but you aren't, you aren't as tangled up in it. You're not trying to manage it and worrying about it. And, and it, it doesn't have anything. It doesn't have a leg to stand on. Like it, there's nothing, there's no stickiness to it when you aren't afraid of it, when you see it clearly. So it, I don't even remember what the question was, but I just want you to get, get a feel for how, how huge this can be. And I totally acknowledge that a one hour webinar is just scratching the surface.
So there's a question about how this changes, diverges from um, cognitive therapy, which is kind of looking at distorted thinking and countering it with rational thinking. That's a great question. Um, it's quite different. It's very, very different because where we're looking in something like a cognitive therapy that looks at the content of your thinking is that it looks at the content of your thinking and then it wants to kind of change it or better it or see through it, see it as thinking, whatever it's doing. So, so in cognitive behavioral therapy or something like that, any kind of thought work or those types of things, any kind of traditional self-help for the most part, really, we're looking right at this guy. We're saying, talk to me. What are you saying? Tell me what you're saying. And, and it's talking and it's telling us all kinds of stuff. And then we're talking back to it. And then we're saying, oh, well, mate, what if that's not true? What if you're wrong about that? And we're having a conversation at this level in our own heads with our own heads. So the, the rational and the conversation and all of that is happening to the irrational thinking, but it's kind of the same creature, really. It's all kind of this guy, the smart, wiser version of this guy having, having a conversation with this guy. It keeps the focus very much right here on what we're thinking as if that means something. So if I'm full of self-doubt about how this webinar just went, my cognitive behavioral therapist would sit me down and say, well, are you sure? What if people actually liked it? What if they heard how big this message is? What if you're wrong about that? And that might make me feel better. But what it does is keep me very planted in the content of my thinking. I'm not at all saying that's not helpful at times. Where I'm pointing, night and day different. Totally, completely different. We're saying, oh yeah, there's a thinker that's always saying stuff but let's not sit down and, and cup, pour a cup of coffee and have a conversation with him all the time. Let's just look at how that he's there and that he's working. And then let's look at this. In other words, let's not dissect that, that storm cloud. Let's look at the sky and let's see how weather works. That weather is working, not what the weather's doing, not why did it rain yesterday and why is it sunny today? Let's look at just how weather works and how the sky works beyond it. You see what I mean? Like it's a totally different direction. I'm not pitting the two against each. I don't even see them as in the same ballpark, to be honest. I, I just don't. Like they're totally different, totally different in how deep they go and, and where they land. But that, those kind of the main, the main differences. Um, someone says, I've got a driving test tomorrow. I had three last year and one 15 years ago. I hope I'm not too anxious. You know, at like, I hope you're not, but if you are, get curious about how you can be there and anxious feelings can also be there. I think one thing we really get caught up in is that our feelings dictate everything. Like our, oh, if I'm too anxious, I won't be able to focus and then I won't be able to drive. And then what if this happens? And what if that happens? That's just how an anxious mind talks. I also know that you have driven and done many, many, many things in life, all of us, with all kinds of feeling. We drive, we drive in depressions. We drive in every mood under the sun. We, we live our lives with feeling moving through all the time. See how you are not that feeling. You don't need to not be anxious in a certain situation. It's so much bigger and deeper than that. It's like, wow, what if anxious could be there and it didn't affect me? It didn't have to bring me down. It didn't have to dictate how my day goes or my driving test goes. That's freedom. See that? I mean, that's huge. That is freedom. Anything can show up. I, I don't love anxiety. I'd rather excitement or happiness be there. I'm not afraid of it. It can show up because it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. It just moves through me and I feel it and I might not like it, but fine. I'm still me. I'm not touched by it. I'm the sky and I'm just taking my driving test living my life, doing this webinar, any feeling can be there. It's huge, huge. This will change every aspect of your entire life if you see that, really it will, it's, it's huge. So I know we're a couple minutes past the hour. I'm just gonna skim what I'm gonna do. Um, yeah, I love someone saying about nightmares and how they used to want to or their therapist used to want to kind of analyze them and explore them. But now it just looks like, oh, that's my creative mind. That's what happens as we start to just see this as this in a sense. Um, 
some excellent questions here about children, helping children and going through things. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to, I'm going to address these questions separately and I'm going to share that with all of you who are registered for this webinar. And I, again, really want to encourage you that if you hear something in this or you have question, you have a burning question here that I didn't get to or a burning question about the school or how that could help you, just email me. It's amy at dramyjohnson.com. You got a bunch of emails from me about this webinar. Reply to one of those, ask me your question, and, and we'll talk about it there because I, you guys, I mean, it's amazing. I just feel so blessed every day that I came across this. And, and, and I know it doesn't always land deeply right away, but I also know that if you keep looking in this direction and stay in this conversation, join us in the school in a couple of weeks, there's no, no doubt in my mind that this will change so much for you. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening, for your attention, your amazing questions. And um, I hope to hear more from you soon. I hope to see you in the school very soon. Bye, everyone.